Good day, I am uh, Dr. Tekia Palatva, a clinical microbiologist, and um, welcome to our part two of our lecture series on uh, urogenital tract infection. And uh, during this part two of our lecture, we will mainly focus on uh, nosocomial urinary tract infection, or what we also call healthcare associated uh, urinary tract infections. So let me just uh, share my screen with you. Okay. So I said that uh, in this part two, we will uh, mainly discuss issues related to healthcare associated uh, urinary tract infections. Okay, so one of the major problem when you are managing patients who are admitted in the hospital is that when those patients are catheterized, it means that when you insert a catheter, a urinary catheter, it might be a urethral catheter or a suprapubic catheter. One of the major problem is that they are going to develop an infection that we call uh, nosocomial infection or nosocomial urinary tract infection. So by putting a catheter in, whether urethra or suprapubic, what we do is that we create a new route of infection. Remember when we discussed the first part of our urinary tract infection, we say that there are two major routes of infection. There is one is ascending infection that is transurethral, and the other one is descending infection following bacteremia from a patient. But now, when you take a catheter that is a foreign body, you insert in the urethra of a patient, you actually create a new route of infection. And this gives microorganisms a big advantage because most of microorganisms who are not true uropathogenic bacteria, they will then take advantage of a foreign body so that they can clamp the urethra and reach the bladder so that they can cause an infection. Okay, that's one thing. The second thing is that we also widen the range of microorganisms that are able to cause an infection because now any pathogen, any microorganism, any bacteria can be able, you know, to colonize the catheter, form what we call a biofilm. It means that they will cut at the surface of the catheter. Let's say that this is a catheter that is inserted in the urethra. Then microorganisms will colonize it. They will cut on the surface of the catheter. They form what we call a biofilm. And in, on that biofilm that they form, they downregulate their metabolic pathway so that even if you give an antibiotic, but those microorganisms that are part of the biofilm cannot be affected. So the only solution will be to remove the catheter or replace it by, uh, with a new catheter. So that's the main problem. Now let's look at urethral catheterization. That's what we say that it is a catheter that you insert via urethra. So you have a catheter, you have a patient who, for any reason, you need to place a catheter so that that patient, so that the urine from the bladder can flow. You know, maybe the patient has an obstruction or for any reason, you place a catheter or you need to monitor the urine outputs from a, a patient who has a renal problems or maybe a chronic renal failure. You place a catheter, you want to monitor the urine output. But then what happens is that the presence of that catheter in the urethra will create a mechanical irritation. So it will irritate the uroepithelium. And because of that, there will be an increase of the epithelial turnover. Then that will then uh, confuse the clinician. Sometimes the patient will complain of pain. Then you might not know 
whether the pen is a result of the presence of a catheter or it is the result of an infection that is developed. So that will become a bit of a problem. Then the second problem is that because of the increased epithelial turnover, you will then see around the catheter lumen, you will see a discharge coming, you know, from both sides of the catheter. So this is the side of the catheter that is in the blood. And this is the other lumen of the catheter that is in the urethra part. Okay, so the discharge will come both side, uh, proximal and the distal side then you might think like this patient is having a, a genital discharge and you will see uh, some clinician will confuse it when they start suspecting sexually transmitted infection. Okay, so you have both distal end discharge, uh, proximal end discharge, and the proximal end discharge that is now um, that is linked to the bladder. So it's now uh, fueling, you know, into the bladder. Then you have all those microorganisms that colonize the catheter. They will found themselves in the bladder and they will then be able to, to cause uh, cystitis, to cause an infection. So you can have that uh, catheter lumen that is uh, another route of infection that we spoke about because it will then be able to, to drive uh, microorganisms into the blood. But we have also what we call suprapubic catheterization. And the suprapubic catheterization is mainly, is commonly done among children, you know, where we actually uh, place a suprapubic catheter. But now the main advantage here with the suprapubic catheter is that the suprapubic skin can be well disinfected while you cannot be able to appropriately disinfect urethra when you want to place a catheter. But the suprapubic area can be well disinfected. And also the skin at the suprapubic area is not as much colonized as what we see in the urethral area. So it actually makes the difference. So this is what I was talking about. Here you can see this is a male patient and this is a female patient. You have the bladder there. And here you have the catheter that is inserted through the urethra of a male patient. So the catheter is inserted there until it reaches the bladder to be able to drain the urine. Okay. So this catheter that is in place here it's uh, in a female patient, the catheter is inserted. So the problem I was explaining is that um, you have mechanical irritation. So this catheter actually mechanically irritates the epithelium of the urethra. And that will then lead to painful sensation that the patient will manifest and that will confuse the clinician whether it the pain is the result of the presence of the catheter or it's a true infection that has developed. Then I also say that there will be an increased epithelial turnover. You will then see discharge in both ends. Both end. You will see the discharge here around the lumen, uh, urethra lumen next to the, around the catheter. You will see like the patient is actually having a discharge this side and you will also see have discharged this side. So here it's uh, spilling um, uh, into the bladder and uh, this then patient will uh, end up developing uh, uh, an infection. So, but when you see that, don't rush of suspecting sexually transmitted infection, especially for a patient who has been uh, admitted in the world for a long uh, period of time and that patient uh, has not been uh, uh, sexually active except for cases where you can suspect a case of a rape on that patient or something but 
you are not going it the discharge you see it just a result of an increase epithelial turnover so this is the catheter that has a balloon here to allow it uh, when you put it in the in the bladder so that it can stick very well you have the balloon and this is the other end of the catheter now what happened is that uh, this is the urethra and um, this is the bladder you see your two ureters are there you see the urine collection and on the urethra end here it's often colonized by microorganisms so you can see microorganisms there colonizing it now when you insert the catheter this is your catheter you are bringing it in you're inserting it and since you cannot disinfect the urethra properly because it, uh, it's not the skin, it's uh, an epithelium, then it will then carry these microorganisms and bring it into the bladder, you know? So these microorganisms will then be in the bladder and from there it will replicate and cause an infection. So this is what you can see that this microorganism is able to multiply in the urine. Or patient who have indwelling catheter, it means that the catheter is there for a long period of time. This microorganism will be coated on the surface of the catheter, downregulate its metabolic pathway, and from there form what we call a biofilm. And when you have a increase epithelial turnover, that discharge will carry out some of the microorganisms from the biofilm and bring them into the bladder. Then this patient will develop what we call a nosocomial urinary tract infection or healthcare associated urinary tract infection. So this was uh, the part two of our lecture series on uh, urinary tract infection. And um, during this part two, we mainly try to demonstrate uh, how nosocomial urinary tract infection occurs. Thank you and follow up in our part three where we will uh, discuss mainly the classification of urinary tract infection. And of course, in our part four, we will then uh, discuss um, the management, diagnosis and management of urinary tract infection. Thank you and bye.